Alrighty, hey folks. So today I wanna give you a run through on my arcade cabinets and how I hook them all up for live streaming and recording game footage from them. We're going through all the hardware setup and also some software bits uh, and we will cover everything from a JBS based cabinet like this Tito Beflix clone that I have here, the Taito Type X2 uh, installed and then we also have um, two Gemma based cabinets so the Hyper Neo Geo 64 and the Neo S2 City uh, which both have um, analog signals right they're Gemma based uh, this one has a CPS2 board with Gigawing and that one has a Neo Geo MBS with uh, King of Fighters so yeah let's get to it So what do we have here? So we have a Taito Type X2 installed in the JBS based cabinet and as you can see I switched it off um, for safety reasons uh, and also because of all the noise and the I.O. connector actually looks a little bit like this here which is like much smaller than the other stuff that you will see in a moment which are the Gemma based arcades. Um, so this is actually for the I.O. like for uh, the joysticks and the buttons and the coin slots and whatsoever, right? So what I actually did to make this work and this was fairly easy. It seemed trivial at first, but it wasn't. And um, the reason is, yes, you get a, a digital signal, but if you want to stream it and you want to play on the arcade on the same time, you first of all need something like this, which is Sorry for the mess, but something like this, which is an HDMI two-way splitter. Kind of obvious, but like you might not think about it like right from the get-go. And yeah, because this is not HDMI, this is DVI actually without audio. Audio is actually here, so this is still like um, an analog connection in this case. Um, what you need to do to actually get the audio into your stream, basically, or into your capture device. Uh, what I use for this is it's this one it's like a blue stream hdmi embedder and d embedder and you can uh, configure it in in various modes using like this dip switch and that allows you to yeah embed the audio so i just take the audio here ah and like another catch right uh you need to split the audio you want to go through like the cabinet itself to the speakers so it comes from here then you split it it's going to the to the cabinet itself and one is actually going to the HDMI audio embedder, which is this little thing. And I will also put some, some links into the description so that you actually know what works and what to get. And yeah, as I said before, the HDMI splitter, you will need that as well. Uh, I was lucky enough that I got like enough power in this um, cabinet, so it might look a little bit different for you. So think about that as well, because this needs power, uh, this needs power, the display needs power, the, your, your board will need power, like everything <laughs> needs power, right? So you, you get it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Alright, so next up. Uh, this is basically how you can wire up pretty much any Gemma arcade board. But what you generally want to do is, you want to get something like this, which is the Advanced Guard to Gemma adapter from RetroElectronic.com electronic with a K at the end. So what it basically does, it's um, you put it on your jammer edge. So this is like a SCART breakout. And what I have connected to this is just like regular uh, SCART cable. And yeah, like as you can see, not much actually going on here. What this actually doesn't give you is audio. So like it just really just takes the video signal, but like no audio at all. So. Uh, what you need to do for this is, and I can't show you this right now, but uh, you will need an in-break box pretty much that you put in between here. Um, so it's like scar to scar, so it's going to be a little bit long uh, longer and it will have like chinch um, connectors or like RCA. Uh, you've seen those before, I'm pretty sure. And what you want to do then is you basically, you want to get like a chinch cable that you solder to the audio points here so that you also get like the audio right so you just solder some stuff in on here like a cable uh, you have the little SCART adapter in between here which I don't have right now and you just take the cable and plug it into like um, the audio in um, yeah and I can also put some links where you get like uh, a break-in 
uh, adapter for, for SCART. But that's already like pretty much everything that's going on here. So this goes to the frame meister. Frame meister goes to my capture device and that's pretty much it. Uh, and because this is just like a breakout adapter here, like you still have your, your Gemma Edge connector here, right? So the cabinet itself, uh, you basically connect it here and you're all set, good to go. Woohoo! All right, last cabinet. So what do we have here? Uh, lots of stuff actually going on in this one. So this one is not connected right now, but I will also give you an overview on this like uh, another day. So what else is in this? Uh, we have a CPS2. Um, so this is where I showed you Gigawin running before. So if you want to capture from this, same deal. So you could just connect the same adapter here on the jam edge, right? That I showed you uh, earlier. And the cool thing is you would even, you wouldn't need to solder anything or something. You could just use the additional SCART audio break-in box and connect it to these ones, right? Because the CPS2 actually has also a, a separate um, audio output. So it has audio output here, but like it also outputs um, audio separately here on the ACR jacks or like the, the change connectors like this has nothing to do with like the video stuff uh, but whatever this the kick harness so this is for like the additional buttons the kick buttons uh, just in case you haven't seen that before but there's one more thing so you don't see an adapter here right and no audio connected here uh, so it seems like it's not hooked up for streaming but Mind the cable in the back. So what is this doing? All right, um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything about the internals of my cabinet. And none of this is like really magic or something, right? But there's quite some stuff that you might not think about from the, from the get-go and you don't know if there's like, I don't know, like a scart breakout right like for uh, for Gemma right like where do I find this um and again I will put all the links uh, into the description below um so yeah maybe you have like a nice checklist now for yeah for the stuff that needs to go inside the, your cabinet um from here it should be fairly easy for people who already did streaming before and also uh, now how to convert like the analog signals to to digital um, for those of you who don't know, so you will need something like an upscaler, so a professional upscaler, uh, ideally, which you use to uh, convert the analog signals into HDMI and then go into your capture device, which could be like an Elgato uh, HD60 something, uh, Pro S whatsoever. Uh, I personally use, I think it's called Makewell or Magewell, I don't know, like a 4K uh, capture device. Um, yeah, but that should be should be trivial. The the only thing that's really important is like the upscale in between, and you can either use like the frame meister um, for this, or you can use something like the OSCC, which is like um, an open source hardware project, uh, which basically does the same thing, um, but has some some other options and does some things differently. Um, so if you're actually keen learning more about that, like I would really encourage you to follow up with Retro RGB or the guys from My Life in Gaming. So those guys actually have like really good coverage on like the frame I stand, how it works, especially Bob. Yeah, obviously this is not like a how-to on how to capture with a camera from your CRT. As you can see, I didn't really do the best job at this. Um, like if you want to learn more about how to do this correctly, uh, there's a video from the Modern Vintage Gamer, uh, which I will also put somewhere in the description or maybe even in a corner here, there or something. I don't really mind, you will find it. Ah yeah, and there are like uh, various other parts that I have in my setup, but like you don't necessarily need them. So I have an AV receiver to actually switch between different HDMI signals that I get, that I then send to my, my capture device, a frame meister goes into it, uh, the Taito Type X2 goes directly into it and yeah, various other things. Uh, I also have like a G-SCART switch in between, uh, which is like a professional, um, well, it's, it's, it's made by one man, 
but like it's like really cool um scott switch you should check it out the scott switch uh if you have more than one like scott input in terms of cables like regular cables like everything that i mentioned there's not really like a special cable involved uh make sure that you get like really good cables and shielded cables uh i for instance use the pekka pekka punch cable from retro gaming cable cu uk uh which is really good it's also quite expensive but like it's like if you have it in your hands <laughs> you can tell it's expensive and it's good it's like has a good shield all right so enough of all the details and and stuff and the how uh, how does it actually look like, right? That's the question, right? Like, so here are some examples from the cabinets uh, right behind me, uh, directly captured, well, so what you've seen, right? So here we go. Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Ah uh, yeah, there was this one more thing, right? Like the cable that you've seen coming out of the CPS2, which looked like a black cable. It actually was an HDMI cable <laughs> connected to the CPS2. So what the fuss about like going all analog? Well, by default, the CPS2 doesn't have a digital output. Uh, and that's true for like pretty much every other jamma based or almost every other Gemma based um, arcade board. But there's some really, really crazy folks around uh, that actually figured out how to get the signal directly, like the video and audio signal directly um, from the CPU uh, on the board and don't go through the analog um, encoder and yeah, basically pass it into their HDMI encoder. Uh, so you get like the raw digital signal out of a CPS2 and they even try to make it compatible right now with the CPS3 saying I've seen a POC of that already uh, and yeah like somebody already did it in the past way back already uh, on a Neo Geo and a MVS so the other thing that I've showed you like somebody really like attached like an FPGA to that uh, and yeah grabbed like the digital signal directly from the boards a little bit more advanced and also not generic. You need to figure that out or like what solutions are available for the different boards that are out there. Uh, but again, I know already about CPS2, CPS3, MVS, uh, and there's more coming. Um, so some of them are still in an early stage. So with the CPS2 one that I have, um, there's a problem that um, the audio is not really 48 kilohertz. It's like a little bit more or less. I think it's a little bit more. And then, uh, depending on your device that you plug this into, uh, you might hear some some choppy or like noisy sound. Uh, it's not too bad actually. Yeah, the only problem is that uh, it goes out of sync uh, on my TV um, because of the, uh, yeah the audio not really uh, like sticking to uh, 48 kilohertz. Um, they're looking into how they can fix this. If you want to know more about that, like links to the different boards and discussions all down in the description. Man, there's so much stuff going on. This is really awesome, right? Like, and I'm not sure if like such a, a tutorial like this already exists. So I'm quite excited about this. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ah yeah, and by the way, if you've seen anything in this video that I didn't talk about or like more questions related to this topic or maybe even you just saw something and was wondering, hey, what's, what's this uh, nifty thing there in the background, right? What does it do? Um, just like put all your questions below uh, into this video. I don't care if it's like related to the topic or not. Uh, I will take the time to look at everything and like get back to you. And again, like I'm not like a super pro or something when it comes to this topic. I just like gathered like quite some knowledge uh, over the last two years by watching uh, Bob's uh, retro RGB uh, videos on uh, my life in gaming, modern vintage gamer. Uh, there are so many awesome uh, people out there that really go into like much more detail than I did in this one. This is more like going wide, right? Like basically, um, yeah, trying to, to, to cover like everything uh, related to streaming from your arcade boards. Um, and if you want to know more and how you want, uh, if you want to know like how to improve. So for instance, if you want to know how to improve on like the, the quality of your analog signal that you capture because you're not quite happy with it yet, again, watch all those other channels, go through all the links in this. Um, I really love the, the community uh, and the effort that they, that they put into this uh, and I just gathered some of this knowledge over the years and yeah basically um, worked on my own setup and now that it's done and pretty much working pretty flawlessly um, I thought I should share this with you give something back right each one teach one um, yeah that's it all right um, so if you like this video uh, make sure to subscribe somewhere down there like it maybe if you liked it and yeah, make sure to check out my next video or, or like the existing stuff that I already have. Uh, there's more to come. I don't have too much time actually that I can spend on like doing YouTube videos right now. I have a, a full-time job uh, and also <laughs> like, uh, don't get me started, like hundreds of other hobbies. Um, but yeah, like again, you ask for it and I will see if I, I can deliver, right? If there's anything that you want me to cover if you want to go into more depths on any of those topics just tell me right all right i'm gone now see you folks thanks for tuning in and see you next time